All right, uh, I'm Brad Vokey. If you guys don't know me, the treasurer of the club. And today, well, originally I was going to do a RTFM on Man 1, which is the interface to the online manuals. But it quickly kind of morphed into really Man 7, which is how to format the man pages and make your own man pages. Because that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to write my own man pages, so. I decided to move that route, and if we were to spend some time on Man 1 and Man 7, there's enough material to fill two presentations, so I'm just going to breeze through Man and just really go to Man 7, which is really the macros to make Man pages. So on we go. Let's start with the history of Man. Oh, no. Got to be careful when you're searching for Man stuff on Google. <laughs> So here is one of the first man pages, and man pages actually outdate the man command itself. So this is an OCR scan of an original man page cat from the Unix System 1 manual, dated November 3rd, 71, at the top left there. And as you can see, um, it's basically the same kind of format that we're using today, layout-wise. Name, synopsis, description, all that stuff on the left. Left indented, right indented. And uh, check out the owner. This is different. We now call this authors because nobody really owns Linux. Um, and even on BSD, it's called authors. Um, and who do you think those Ken and GMR are? Ken Thompson. Ken Thompson. Dennis M. Ritchie. And what's the M stand for? Dennis McAllister Ritchie. Oh, <laughs> They're the original authors of uh, Unix. What I found was interesting was that even back in 1971, they couldn't come up with a username styling convention. <laughs> yeah, but they had no bugs. Um, well, yeah, you know, reading somebody, this is, a, this is an interesting archive place you can go to. It's all original man catalogs. And we had a copy of maybe the System 5. Is that cat.org? Uh, yeah. Anyway, when I was paging through it, there's a lot of these old commands that do have bugs in them and going like, you know, we really should restrict this to super user and it's like, yeah. Uh, so what is man page? Basically, if you still haven't caught on, man is short for manual. Um, it covers all the topics on your system. It's not just library and system calls. It's also uh, standards and conventions and abstract concept, and abstract concepts. So there's a whack load of man pages that have nothing to do with commands on your system. You normally view it by just typing the man. This would be like to the man one RTFM. Get the man, section number is optional, and type in the page name. This on wiki, this actually says command name, which is kind of misleading because there's lots more of, as I said, man pages that have nothing to do with commands. And by default, when you run man, it pipes it to more or less like a pager program. So the output you're getting from man isn't really even man at all. You're using less or more, and I'm not going to go into any of that stuff. So here's what a real man page looks like when you actually look under the hood. On the right there. It's basically just a text file. It's formatted with a collection of Groff typesetting commands and that are defined by the man package, man macro package. And this basically has stayed consistent since about 1979. And some of it, some of those macros, like the dash, the dot B here, these, these things on the side, those are the macros, and then stuff in the text is what's going to display or what's going to happen with the macro. And some of that stuff is actually dating back to 1964, it's pre Unix, uh, from a program called Run Off, which is maybe how this. Roth got its name, the original Roth. Yeah, well, was the original for run was called Roth, and then they had Enroth, which is right. the new, new Roth. And, Roth. and then and Trough, Roth and all those. Is, is the GNU the, uh, Roth. new version of it, yeah. But Roth itself, I was like, well, where did Roth come from? And it's short for the run off. Uh, yeah, the run off. Yeah. Yeah, so um, after saying all that, basically, because these macros work, Stick, you can actually uh, format pages with other graph commands that aren't defined in the man macros. And they'll work in some distributions, but not all. So really stick with what's defined in the man package, and then you'll know it's going to work. Unless you're on BSD. BSD started replacing all the man macros with mdoc, 
macros. Yeah. Around 1994, they finally finished that kind of package in 2009, from what I can figure out. Hmm. And um, Amdoc is more semantic. That's why they went that route. <clears throat> so um, the man, ma 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 man macros are mostly about how to physically lay out the page. They don't really go into, don't really define, you know, font, uh, the font for this should be that, and the color of this should be that. That's left to the author. Whereas um, BSD decided we should be, when we're making manuals, kind of define that stuff out for you. So you kind of define, this is a switch, and then the macro package decides I'm gonna make that italic or not italic or whatever. Yeah. Why was there a date uh, terminating date 2009? Is that not used anymore? No, no, it just kind of was mostly finalized by that date. Uh -huh. It was kind of in flux between those two dates. Um, I think 2009 is when uh, FreeBSD kind of came out, and that's when they said, okay, this is where we're going to make the MDoc package complete. <coughs> yeah. Uh, I hope I'm not still the thunder from the next slide, but the OpenBSD project. Uh, starting about two years ago, embarked on a new revitalization <sighs> of MAN that <laughs> has now been adopted by NetBSD, FreeBSD, Dragonfly BSD. And it's not MDoc? Some Linux distributions, including Arch, I believe, and I forget what else. It's not the next and slide. I didn't even know about it. It's based on MDoc, but it's it's gone even further into the semantic meaning and the display output <coughs> has been completely decoupled from the semantic meaning. Gotcha. So it's it's using, more given common. It's, it's using, uh, 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 if you know what XSS does, it's kind of similar, except it's the same. Um, <laughs> so I'm assuming they're going to back port. And it also includes backward compatibility where it tries to read original old-fashioned man pages and tries to automatically map the, tries to guess at which what the best thing. Have the semantic meaning. Well, that's what the good thing here. Don't have to worry about it because MAN and all the distributions actually calls this package, which actually goes and checks is this a MAN formatted document or is it an MDoc formatted document and does the right thing. So I'm assuming they're going to put another switch in there to see if it's going to. No, it's just auto detects everything. It just auto detects it all. The, the nicest thing is it's fully indexed and you can cert, the search function is actually useful now. Ah, yes. I'm assuming you're getting Gapper Co at some point. Uh, no, I'm not really going to get into that a bit. Well, maybe if I get time, but I don't have a lot of time. <laughs> um, so which one do you use, MAN or MDOC or the new package? Um, they all work, both on Linux and, and BSD. Um, but MAN specifically on BSD says, do not use MAN to write your manuals. It lacks support for semantic mark markup. Use the MDOC language instead. But MAN on Linux says, this is still the proper package to keep writing pages for Linux. So thanks to Trevor, he gave me a nice little one-liner. I could figure out which man pages were using what on each of my systems here. So on that laptop, there's only 40% of the man pages actually using MDoc, and it's a BSD system. And then on my Linux Fedora 24, 99% are still using man. Interesting, when we did that uh, reinstall of man pages, uh, the MDoc count went up to 61 pages using MDoc. What's the other 6%? Is that like info or... Oh, sorry, where are you referring to? Pinfo or info? No, the 0.6%, yeah, that's how many on Fedora are using MDoc. Which is the BSD system. Probably just man pages that came from exactly. <laughs> BSD yeah. heritage yeah. Uh, commands. So uh, my conclusion was uh, use MDoc or the new BSD system that's coming out. Follow their guidance if you have a BSD system. Um, if you really want to be modern and, and use all the new fancy features, go with MDoc or the new system. Otherwise, just use MAN and, uh, and stick with what works, because change is hard and overrated. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? I, when I was looking through the two syntaxes, even though people were saying MDoc is better and it's cleaner and blah, 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 I'm looking at it and going, I can kind of show you a bit here. Um, so there is the man syntax. It's really similar. It's like they just changed things. The th is a header, sh is a section header, and the th was like a top header. Um, <coughs> that's not b is a bold, that i is an italic. So it's, it's pretty much the same on both systems. 
but it just seems a little bit more complicated with the upper lower case and can't teach her own. As you can see, more things are defined out. You actually define a date, uh, define the, uh, I'm not even sure what all this, I didn't look too much into the AMDOC stuff. Um, the section headers, that's actually the, the title page headers, are defined in, in different spots, whereas on the other one, it's defined all in one header with different. The man seven is the name of the, well, man is the name of the man page, seven is the section, the date, um, Linux is the system, and Linux programs manual is the name of the manual that it belongs to. Anyway, so that's all in one line as opposed to breaking it up into four or five. Whatever, we'll move on. So where are man pages put on your system? Um, direct, traditionally, they're all stored in a structure with a section number that relates roughly to the original Unix printed manuals, numbers one through eight. There has been some switching around at times. And uh, there's newer sections now too, and there's even more newer sections than some systems. So you can, um, you can, uh, I'll show you how to look to see what your system supports. So basically the man one command, which is the man command for uh, viewing man pages, is stored in section one, because that's a general command. And uh, you'll notice that a lot of them are gzipped up. They don't have to be, but most of them are gzipped up, at least on Linux they are. Whereas the man seven, which is the miscellaneous, is the description of how to make man pages is stored in section seven. And then if you're going to make up your own man pages, throw them in user local, as opposed to user share. Um, what else was I going to talk about? There was a couple things. Oh yeah, I guess I was going to show where to get it on your system. <laughs> So there's a, there's a command called man path. Oh, I guess you're not seeing this. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Just coming over there. You send those baby mice. Oh, that's because I know that one over there is a uh, full page. Well, I'll finish this description, then we'll go back to it. <clears throat> So where can you get help? This is where you can go for your documentation. Man-pages in, in section seven is where you'll find all the conventions for writing a proper Linux man page. The sections that it needs, um, how to write stuff in those sections, proper language to use, all that sort of stuff. If you're using your own man pages for yourself, you don't have to pay too much attention to it, but you should still read through it. And that is the path of man page you should read for all the macro commands, gruff underscore man. And uh, if you're going to do it, do it with mdoc, then that's the one you need to define all the mdoc commands if you want to look up what each dot command does. So let's see if we can quickly make a man page. So for this, maybe I'll put on mirror mode. All right, can you read that to make it bigger. Alright, so um, we've checked man, pa man path is another command that will show you where your man pages are looking. Um, you'll see that on this BSD system, it actually looks at user local share first for man pages, then it lo looks at user share man for man pages, then it looks at other places. So make sure you have that directory in there if you're going to make your own. Otherwise, you're, you can add that to the, uh, the man uh, configuration file, um, which I should grab my notes here. Do, do, do that was that's what a, the man configuration file looks like here and it's in etc uh, etc slash uh, man uh, dot conf and on Linux it was man db dot conf I believe you know so in here there's a section and da, 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 there's your man pass that you can set you're here and then uh, in here, you can also have your section numbers where this will show you what sections the man page will be looking for. Right there, man section. <coughs> so you can see that when it's searching for a command, it starts at one and it goes into 1p. That's a subdirectory of the man 
uh, section. Uh, P stands for POSIX, so if there's any POSIX commands in one, it'll be in the one P section. Uh, it goes to 8, 2, that relates back to the original man Unix manuals, so that 8 used to be ahead of 2, they kind of switched those two sections around, and so on and so on and so on. You see there's also an L, which is also for local files, but I haven't really heard of anybody actually using that L section for their own stuff. They basically, if you write your own stuff, still put it, whether it's a 1 for command or 7 for general stuff or whatever. We use it at work. The L file? Yes. Yeah. So what's the uh, P and O? Perl. Perl? Perl. P is usually Perl. Oh, okay. And mm -hmm. O is usually... I've never seen O. Yeah, I've got it on Perl. All right, uh, I think we're ready to see our first man page here. Do, 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 do. There's a simple man page. Ah, uh, well, I thought the subsections were all the POSIX stuff. There's a whole section just for POSIX itself. I guess there could be. Well, it's only system dependent, too. Yeah. There's no standard. Hmm. All right, so um, this is just a simple file. We're making a little command program called corrupt, which modifies modify files randomly by changing bits. <laughs> um, so there is our first header up there. Should I make this bigger? You can all see that, right? So basically that is just uh, setting the header of the man page to corrupt and saying it's in um, section one. Uh, every man page should have that TH and they should have these basic options, description, synopsis, and name for their section headers. And you just define that with the .sh and then whatever header it is. Um, the line here, that little slash, use the mouse over here, slash dash, it's important to distinguish when you're doing man pages that that um, in the name section lets um, Apropro look for words after that when it's doing a searching for uh, commands that provide stuff. So if you're searching for files, this will come up as something for Apropro. And it also um, properly formats it. If you don't put the dash in, it'll still kind of work, but Apropro will have trouble finding it. And later on in your documentation, when you're doing Stuff for switches. I think also in TROF, that was the way to specify that you wanted an N dash. That's what I meant here, yeah, dash. exactly. Yeah. So um, if you want that dash to be a proper, like, minus switch kind of dash, um, Groff and TROF will know not to split a line at that spot, always stick it to the word before, ahead of it, and stuff like that. So you'll find a lot of the dashes in front of, or slashes in front of the dashes in a lot of the documentation. Uh, the dash B is just basically bolding. Um, yeah, okay, well let's, uh, let's save this and let's actually uh, show you it. To just see one of your own man pages, where am I right now? It's there, corrupt one. So this is just in my own local directory called mug. There's just a file, name it with whatever section number you want at the end. You don't need to zip it, it doesn't have to be zipped. And to actually display it, you can just force man to display it by putting in uh, that you want to display a local file. Oh. And don't go searching for it. Oop. Yeah, corrupt is what we want. So it works. There it is. I'm just off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's it. A lot of that stuff is optional. You can put it in if you want. Program, I prefer to remain anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> now, can you do this to Dev Kano? To what? Like, just kernel memory or something. Oh, kernel memory. Shut the devs. Uh, so what else do we want to try and show here? Oh, this little confusing stuff here. So what's happening here with that um, slash F in the middle? So instead of making the dash B says this line is going to be all bold, you can do stuff within a line by going slash F bold now. Let's do a dash N in bold. The slash F says, okay, return to an R stands for Roman, which is the default just for back to the normal character set. Um, and then we go over slash F says, okay, now in the same line, let's change the formatting again. I is italics, which in most of our man documentation just shows up underlined, saying that that is uh, something that we're supposed to substitute with our own stuff. And then back to Roman. So it's a way of putting it all into the same line without doing multiple lines with a dot B before each one. Some of them you can combine. Uh, let's see if anything combined up here. 
not receiving. Line oh, eight, BR, I think is line eight, the IR. And it alternates R. between uh, oh, Catholics right. and Roman. So what that is doing is it says IR, make the first word file italic, make the second argument in this macro um, back to Roman. So if you look at this man page. Uh, da, da, da. What were we talking about? It's a little further down, isn't it? Is it up there? Yeah, it's right here. Uh, can't worry about the hack. Uh, the, after the bits, yeah. the file is italic, yeah. but the dot dot dots are not. Mm -hmm. So that's what uh, that was doing. Notice also that file and dot 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 are stuck together with Yes, state, even though... Even though they were separate. Arguments. Separate there. Yeah. And to put spaces in... Uh, the, like if we did this, if you wanted those both to be italic with something after that, um, another dot dot dot. Not that that makes any sense. <laughs> but you'll see now that the bits and the file are both italic, and then we went. Oh, sorry, the file and the first three dots are italic, and then we went to non-italic after that. Yeah. And yes, the quotes don't show up because they're part of just the command. Just think of those things being thrown into a, a macro command, kind of like a command line of. The formatting. So if we want to actually put that into our system so we have a man corrupt, because if we just go man corrupt, it's not going to show up. No manual entry. So you've got to copy it into the user local share. I guess I should actually copy corrupt into there. Make sure you put it in the right section. And do you use that quite often? Oops. To corrupt files? No. <laughs> it's, a, it's a dummy. Uh, it's, this yeah. is really a file. <laughs> it's supposed to be April 1st today. All right, so that copied over to man, and now when, uh, or that directory, now if we do a man corrupt, it actually shows up. You will note that right now it's not going to do uh, what is. Um, because you still have to update the database that what is uses and Apper Pro uses to go look through all that stuff. Um, and on Linux, it's simple as man db return. On BSD, it's uh, update what is. But I had some trouble getting it working. I guess I can try again. You gotta do, uh, where was that again? ETC exec library, library exec, lib exec? Yeah. Uh, user user. user lib exec. Uh, what is, no update what it is. Oh, make what is, that's what it is, right. Yeah, of course. Can you do a pseudo double exclamation point and it'll rerun the last command? It's got to go through the whole uh, directories there. Yeah. <clears throat> and now it should work, right? Yeah. Let's do what it is. Yeah. Still couldn't find it. So I think there's something else happening on the Mac. When I do that same command with uh, verbose, I can see it reading a whole bunch of stuff, but at the end it's supposed to say update on those two. Maybe it's not finding the local on the on this Mac. On my Linux system, it, it just worked with MakeDB and it just worked. Um, that's really about it. Any other questions? Yes. Earlier you said that the man would work with things like programs and, and different parts of the system, would it work for him? Would there be a man wallet? Uh, man pages for KDE tend to be awful spurt, uh, sparse. They are pretty much full of very generic templates that doesn't really give very much information. Brad, what command did you just run? Uh, what? No, it was uh, make what is. I'm thinking it's not looking at uh, well, locals. BSD doesn't fully do a full re-index every time. It only updates. It only updates. 
I know I was reading somewhere else that you're supposed to do, um, it's called update weekly, just run the update weekly command when you want to also have it done. You can run the man page on that and see if there are <laughs> options for it. Yeah, man. Add as path to it. Some of the other man stuff that might be interesting in this, you can do a man. What was that? Mankw. Dash D. No. What? Oh, corrupt it online. Here's the actual man command that it's spinning out and before it actually runs to get your stuff. And you can see here, here's the actual graph command here that's spinning out w, w, the dash w all and the TTY character, T ASCII, there's the man doc that we were talking about. This T ASCII means that we're going to just output to the screen because this could be a T um, P S, I think, for postscript. And you can define that actually when you're running man, you can actually type in postscript for the output. That's a command. Oh, and then there's the final pipe to less. And I'm assuming that or true thing is so that if it's in a pipe command, it's not going to less? Uh, or true is so that the man command basically never reports failure. Uh -huh. So I thought when you. Decided that was a good design. So if I can't find the man page, it's going to ask zero instead of asking one. Yeah. But if you pipe man to cat, doesn't it just. List it all out. It doesn't go through the page or then, right? That's probably less than that. Oh, more true is only um, paired with less, so it's just so that you you you're not going to get an error status from less causing an error status for the man command. Oh, right. If you got an error status earlier in the pipeline, it, that'll still come through. So if user view less isn't there, it will just exit. Well. That still doesn't seem like a good design decision. No, the thing is, less can give a different exit status, like if you, um, oh, okay. if you oh, force an exit or something. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Alright, so that's pretty much it. I mean, there's some other commands in man. Um, the dash K, I believe, was the one keyword. that does uh, apropos, or is that yeah. the what is? That's the apropos. Yeah, that's the keyword. So, yeah, if you want to search for uh, keywords in man, um, That'll search all the. That searches the whole pages, right? Can you tell me, apropos and what is aren't the same. I thought they were the same. No, apropos searches the whole text of the man page. No, that's, no. It's yeah. just the keywords in the the. Uh, oh, the I know what the difference is. Uh, section. If I search for what is man, it's only find what is searches this, and I'll put stuff. Right. Apropos right. searches this. This part. And I'll yes. Put stuff. Exactly. Yeah, we answered one thing. Good, unless you're on one of the new man doc systems, in which case apropos is actually a general purpose query tool. Finding it everywhere. You can actually look up things like specific error return codes. <coughs> uh, you can look up functions to, or parameters to functions. You can search on all kinds of things. I thought there was something here. Minus the capital K. So what's the capital K? Is that searching? That is that's the capital K would be searching the actual man page blur completely, yeah. right? Yeah. That's why it's warning very slow. How much is slow? I mean, it just wasn't grab. Yeah, but grab dash R on the black page is exactly tiny. Uh, let's try that. Good. <laughs> you couldn't do just a simple grip because you got a buff, you got a thousand files. That's you you open it? Yeah, yeah, that's oh, okay. yeah, then, okay, then you go on to others. Yeah. And then they're finding that. Yeah, yes, yes, no quiz. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Go on to the next one. There was another one too for, um, man, I don't know if it's on BSD, where you tell man to find all the man pages that are that name, and it'll send them one after the other to less. It's on Linux, but I don't think it's here on uh, on BSD. Is that a dash A? There's no dash A, not alphabetically. Was there? Right there, after S. Oh, there we are. Because that's where A is. Oh wait, those are uppercase, those are lowercase, so... 
Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> Screw that. <laughs> and this bug bugged me too. There's a lowercase d and an uppercase d, right? Okay, so ironically, this man page is a very bad example of a man page. <laughs> so if I go man dash d, it's saying no, I don't have a dash d. What are you what are you asking for? What am I doing wrong? It's plain saying there's d is a is an argument, right? This could be a Darwin thing, I don't know. Well, obviously it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's the usage. Man patron master. Does uh, maybe you need the, the small D so so capital D. Oh, uh, maybe. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, that's uh, enough for that. We'll touch on more stuff at future RTFMs. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks.